imagine if you're successful, we eventually do colonize Mars, and you're correct. We, Earth winds up through human folly or natural disaster getting wiped out. And there's only the colony on Mars. And that colony exists for 10, 20,000 years. And they have their origin myth that we all came from Earth. I mean, ultimately, that's going – if if this does happen, you do colonize Mars and Earth does get destroyed. And if there, a period of time takes place – like look at the, the period, like at least the conventional timeline of the Great Pyramid, which is 4,500 years ago. 5,000 years. Yeah. yeah. So that's not that much time. It's not that much time. No, I mean, if, so if it's nothing in the on the galactic time scale, right? So if we're talking twenty, thirty thousand years from now on Mars, and people talk about Times Square and what Earth used wow. to be like, I mean, it is. I think that there's some debate. It's like, how do you say what the when did civilization start? And I'd say like probably the, from the first writing. Mm -hmm. um, and and the first the first writing is only fifty five hundred years old. Yeah, it's worth reading about the history of writing, but only fifty five hundred years. And that and um, one has to credit basically the ancient Sumerians who aren't around anymore uh, with the first writing. Are you aware though that like there's hieroglyphs that depict uh, a history of Egypt that goes back far longer, maybe even thirty thousand plus years ago? But archaeologists dismiss it because they think that that's mythical. But non-conventional archaeologists who believe in what's called the Younger Dryas Impact Theory, okay. that uh, somewhere around 11,800 years ago, civilization was essentially all but wiped out by comet impacts. Um, okay. And that that is the reason why they keep finding these in, in, in insanely old, huge structures, megalithic structures that are carved out of stone. Like okay. when you go to back to like Gobekli Tepe, which is eleven thousand six hundred years ago, okay. that's that's an insanely old structure that they didn't even know people were capable of building until they discovered it in the nineteen nineties. So the conventional timeline of people when you go to eleven thousand six hundred years ago was just hunter gatherers, but now that they have Gobekli Tepe with its three uh, D carved uh, things, and have you seen Graham Hancock's uh, amazing series on Netflix called uh, Ancient Apocalypse? I uh, know. You should check it out. It's amazing. But it's about that. It's all about that. There's a lot of physical evidence of an advanced civilization from far, far, far longer ago than we have conventionally okay. dated, which is ancient Sumer, which is, we, we put it at yeah. about 6,000 years ago. Yeah, but like the first, it's, it's difficult to date, to date it with precision, but, or at least to within a few hundred years, but it's roughly 5,500 years, it, like if you say like, what is the oldest like stone tablet? Yeah. Um, because this is, uh, you, you know, it's, it, if, if you're like an archaeologist, if you were to discover something older than that, you'd be very famous. You know, it's like, it's like they really looked hard. Yeah. Um, and 5,500 years uh, really is kind of the, 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 if you say like any kind of evidence that, that, I've, that I've seen that is actually substantial, is, is writing is 5,500 years old. Yeah, in terms of writing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what they believe is that, there's very little left of this ancient civilization other than things like the pyramids, other than things okay. like the Sphinx. There's a geologist that really stuck his neck out. His name is Dr. Robert Schock from Boston University. And what he said was his theory is that there's deep water erosion all over the temple of the Sphinx where the Sphinx was carved out of. That is indicative of thousands of years of rainfall. And the last okay. time they had rainfall in the Nile Valley was around 9000 B.C. So what he believes is because back then the the whole Nile Valley was a lush rainforest, then eventually receded into desert. Um, okay. Yeah. So the entire that whole area, like even the Sahara, used to be rich rainforest, and it receded into what it is now. But if you go back then, he believes that's when that thing was constructed, and he says yeah. the physical ge ge the the geologists look at it and if yeah. they if he, if he shows it to them in terms of like just shows an image of the erosion and doesn't tell them where it is they'll almost all of them will say that's water erosion from thousands well, of years of rainfall I, I think even if you say like okay even if even if you know even if you say like okay civilization is like nine thousand years old it's still nothing nothing, nothing. nothing. yeah so you know we're still talking about like a very tiny fraction of earth's existence like earth, yeah 
um, the geological age of evidence suggests the Earth is about four and a half billion years old. Um, so um, human civilization has been around for roughly one millionth of Earth's existence. Yeah. Because we're just basically nothing. And if, even if it's 10,000 years. It's even like, if it's 30,000 years. Yeah, it's like, still nothing. Yeah. What they're th saying, though, is that civilization is insanely fragile. That's and, exactly. And much, I think much more fragile, very fragile than I think we realize. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think we should view civilization as being fragile. Yeah, but we don't. In that bizarre, it's one of the weird things about people is that we, in, unless the threat is in front of us, it's abstract. Unless it's like, real, is the pizza here? Oh, yeah. Pizza's here. Yeah. I From mean, civilization. No, actually, one, like, one of my sons who is a Saxon, he, he has these profound observations. Um, you know, and he asked me, what was L.A. like 4,000 years ago? I'm like, mm. it wasn't around. And he said, what will it be like in 4,000 years from now? Hmm, probably buried, buried under rubble, I guess. Probably very similar to what it was like 4,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Except they, less it, radioactive. And, and he asked me, did they speak English 4,000 years ago? I'm like, nope. Here it's we like, go. like, did they, will they speak English 4,000 years from now? Probably not. I should point out that I never eat pizza. <laughs> really? No. Never. <laughs> Why not? Because it's not really good for you. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's going to accuse pizza of being like a, the healthiest thing in the world. This looks awesome. That does look awesome. <laughs> you want to play, Jamie? Yeah. Get in there, sir. Grab a piece. All right, Let's sick. Go. <laughs> this is awesome. And uh, what's the name of this pizza place Living again? Life. Pizza Leon. Pizza Leon? Yep. Shout out to Pizza Leon. Oh, yeah. That really hit the spot. That's legit. I mean, I'm no Dave Portnoy. I'm not like <laughs> a, a pizza analyst. He'll probably... I'm not going to rate it. It's excellent. This Portnoy really gets into pizza? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Have you seen Portnoy's videos where he analyzes pizza? Oh, my God. It was like a whole method... He's okay. got a number system. All right. He's into the crust and the flop and all these different things. And wow. Yeah. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> yeah. What What is his? Everybody knows the rules. One bite. Yeah. You only get one bite of a pizza? Yeah. No. One bite to taste it. That's for like that's the rules. Yeah, he okay. bites into it, and then he just starts nodding his head. He's basically like a Somalia pizza. <laughs> pizza Somalia, okay. Yeah. And and, and it's, is, he, is there like... What's his favorite pizza joint? Always cheese. Oh, the favorite one. That's the everyone wants to know that. It's always cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, we spend so much time on pizza. And it's New Haven, New Haven, Connecticut. Really?